Arise, shine, our light has come. Welcome to worship on the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. We are so glad everyone is gathered in this digital space. We especially welcome those who are with us for the first time or maybe not regular members of um, worshipers with us here at Grace Lutheran Church. We're so glad that you're gathered. Please take a moment to light a candle in your worship space, to type your prayer request into the Facebook feed, and to consider the question of the day, which is, in today's gospel, Jesus ends the isolation of people ill and demon-possessed. We have an opportunity to participate in Jesus' healing ministry by reaching out to others to end isolation and restore connection. And of course, we'll hear more about that in the sermon, but the invitation is to consider, after church is over today, to whom will you reach out? With whom will you connect? That's something to think about. Let's begin our worship giving thanks for baptism. Blessed are you, O God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of new life offered to us in the waters of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. We give you thanks, O God, for through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. We give you thanks, O God, for you led your people Israel through the sea from slavery into freedom. We give you thanks, O God, for at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks, O God, for by water and your word you claim us as your beloved children in whom you are well pleased. We praise you for your presence in this living water. In this water we are washed. In this water you come to us with beauty and the gentleness like a dove. In this water you renew us and fill us with your forgiveness, grace, and love that we might be your hands and feet in this world. To you, O God, be all honor and glory and praise now and forever. Amen. We sing together, praise the one who breaks the darkness.
of Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We sing together the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. A couple of months ago, my dear sister tested positive for COVID-19. She works in healthcare, so of course is exposed to many people every workday. The good news is that her symptoms were very mild and she never required medical attention. What challenged her, what has challenged many people during the course of this pandemic, was the isolation she practiced for her family's good health. Again, the good news is that she was able to isolate easily within her own home. Yet sharing a home with her husband and two young children, but not hugging them, speaking to them only on the phone, not participating in their daily family life, saddened her more than the virus itself. She told me that my sweet, six, my sweet six-year-old niece would leave gifts at her door knock, run away, and then peek around the corner to catch a glimpse of her mother's face when my sister would open the door to retrieve the gift. Isolation can be heartbreaking, as we well have learned during this pandemic. The people Jesus heals in today's gospel story are also isolated. Isolated by illness, by demon possession, by shame. The communities Jesus visits enforce this isolation through the assumptions and expectations of their culture. First century Mediterranean people believed that illness came as a result of sin, either the sin of that particular person or sin passed down through the generations. First century Mediterranean people also believed that demon possession reflected the nature of the person possessed. And therefore, families and entire communities abandoned those possessed by demons. Most importantly, in a culture valuing above all else kinship, family, and honor, Jesus' heals in today's gospel story are isolated. They cannot be touched at risk of making others unclean. 
Their relationships are severed with family and community. They, some cannot show their face at the community well or the local synagogue. The first chapter of Mark is filled with stories of healing. Jesus hops from one ailing person to another, from home to home, city to city, proclaiming the good news, healing and casting out demons. When Jesus heals these beloved ones on the margins of the Jewish community, he breaks religious law as well as social mores. He takes Simon's mother-in-law by the hand, a woman he shouldn't be touching in any circumstances, but especially these circumstances, for her illness makes him unclean. He interfaces with those possessed by demons. Jesus does not keep himself unstained by the chaos of illness and need and evil. Entering into the real life of those marginalized, he restores relationships. No longer will illness isolate people from their families. No longer will illness stop them from hugging their loved ones and sharing daily life. No longer will demon possession stigmatize beloved ones who had fled villages to the isolation of the wilderness. No longer will shame rule, for Jesus has broken it open by entering into it with people. If you are a Brené Brown groupie, as I am, you know that she speaks about shame thriving on secrecy and silence. Once shame is acknowledged, spoken of, and doused with empathy, its power is broken. And that's what Jesus does when he cures people in plain sight of whole cities gathered to witness his power. The healing stories of Jesus can comfort us because we hear in them God's power to heal us. The healing stories of Jesus can also disturb us because they lead us to question, why isn't God healing me? The healing stories of Jesus can bring us down because we know we can't heal the way Jesus did. Today, I hope the healing stories of Jesus empower us encourage us, fill us with hope. Yes, the Gospel writer Mark tells us Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And while we cannot contribute to healing, and while we can contribute to healing in many and various ways, we cannot heal with the immediacy and the divine power of Jesus. But the healing of Jesus is not just about curing illness and casting out demons, but about restoring relationship. We who know well the devastating effects of isolation and shame also know that with God's help and by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, we can free ourselves and others from isolation and shame. Even being in this space, sharing community by the grace of technology, the Holy Spirit has gathered us and freed us from isolation. We are here with one another, and our connection need not stop here. We are all familiar with the tools by which we may connect with one another, even in a pandemic. Phone calls and emails, text messages and love sent through the mail, small gifts left on doorsteps and cups of coffee outside and distant. We need not live in isolation, weighed down by the things we do not say. The good news of Jesus' healing ministry is not just about curing ailments and casting out demons. It's about his presence with each person isolated and ashamed. It's about restoring relationships between people who feel lost. No wonder the Holy Spirit gathered the disciples together on the day of Pentecost to form the church, to continue Jesus' ministry of healing, of presence, of relationship. The question of the day is, 
When church is over today, to whom will you reach out? With whom will you connect? Now, you may not be keen on sharing their name uh, in the Facebook feed. That is totally fine. Um, I'm just checking to see if anyone is, uh, has shared. Ursula writes, I will go to the church directory and call someone I don't usually call. Yes! Thank you, Ursula. That is fabulous. I encourage uh, anyone who's maybe not sure who to call to follow Ursula's lead and open up the church directory. We sent it out many weeks in a row um, earlier in the pandemic. So I invite you to open up that church directory and just call somebody maybe you haven't thought of for quite a while, but someone you know and someone you care about. Um, that is a great idea. But who will, with whom will you connect? Maybe it's someone outside of Grace. Maybe it's a family member or a friend or a coworker. Um, maybe it's someone you know is struggling. Maybe it's someone you just haven't talked to in a while. We get to be part of Jesus' healing ministry. And in doing so, we also end our own isolation. That's a win-win, church. Thanks be to God. Amen. Blessed by God's presence, we offer up the needs of our community, our world, and all God's creation. We give you thanks for the church, O oh God. Bind us together that we might encourage one another and grow in faith. We give you thanks for the generous witness of Desert Streams Lutheran Church. Christ, be our light and shine on us.
danger of losing their homes. God, we lift up all those who have been unable to pay rent or mortgage during this time of pandemic. And the deadline has now passed for many. Um, God, we pray that you would watch over each and every person. We also pray for landlords who are also feeling um, between a rock, a feeling like they're between a rock and a hard place. Um, God, we pray that you would help us find a way through this difficult time. We pray um, for Jim's sister Grace, for comfort and peace as she nears the end of her life. God, we pray that you would surround her with as many family and friends as is possible during this time, that she would know that she is not alone. We give you thanks that you do receive her, O oh God, into your loving arms. We give you thanks. We lift up Mike Robertson, who was on life support after a severe traumatic brain injury last weekend. And we also lift up the Chris Kuhn's family on the death of his mom, Katie. God, we pray for Mike that you would bring healing to his body, that you would work in all that is done by medical professionals, that you would guide them. We pray also that you would comfort Chris and his family as they grieve the death of his mother. We give you thanks for her life and for the ways that she blessed many. We pray that each person who grieves her death would know your peace. We lift up all those who are struggling with COVID-19. We pray healing for each person. And we pray wisdom for all those who provide medical care, that they would be guided by you, O God. We pray peace for John, Anne, Kathleen, Liz, Evelyn, and Ken. God, you know the situations that all of these beloved folks are in. We pray that you would provide for them whatever it is that they need at this time. God, I give you thanks for the ways that you are building connections between us. We give you thanks that Edith will call her grandchildren today, that Ursula will be looking through the directory for someone she hasn't talked to in a while, and I give you thanks for all the other connections that will be made today. Guide us in reaching out to one another, to be your people, to be the church, to participate in your healing ministry. Christ, be our light and shine on us. and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. You can't hear him, but everyone, well, the three other people said, and also with you, please share the sign of Christ's peace with one another. You might do so in the Facebook feed. Maybe you'll text someone. Maybe you'll text someone you haven't texted or called or emailed in a while. That would be a great way to connect with someone, to share the peace of Christ with them. Or maybe it will simply be with someone who is sitting near you right now. We continue to give thanks to God for the generous gifts that make this ministry possible. Um, if you have any questions about how to give, please do reach out to me. And we give thanks uh, to Jeffrey now for sharing some special music.
Let us pray. O God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love, through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. O God, when our hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. When impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. When distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Open us to all you do, that we might partake in your marvelous work. Amen. We are really grateful for everyone's presence with us this morning. If you do not currently receive the bulletin on a weekly basis and would like to, please email me at pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at graceinthecity.com. Our quarterly community building goal is to assist as we can with the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine in our community. If you need assistance with registering for your vaccine appointment and getting to it, please talk with me. We encourage everyone to receive the vaccine as soon as it becomes available for your demographic. Also, I shared in this past week's email that the county is looking for volunteers to help at its vaccination sites. Volunteers with medical certifications are needed more urgently than non-medical volunteers, but everyone is needed and welcomed to volunteer. Even if your medical certification is lapsed, they will work with you to get it reinstated quickly. So if you need help finding the information, please let me know. Our Wilbur emphasis is ELCA World Hunger for monetary gifts and pop-top soup cans for the Mount of Olives food closet. Any In uh, food donations can be brought to church on Sunday mornings or during office hours. I was just remembering that normally on this Sunday, because it is the Super Bowl is being played today, I hear it's there's a game, and I guess it's the tell me again who is playing the Uh, Buccaneers, Buccaneers Chiefs. Chiefs. Yeah, okay. So I I had heard of the Chiefs, I had not heard of the Buccaneers before, but normally we would be taking a noisy offering today for ELCA World Hunger, putting our cash and coin and checks into soup pots for Soup Herbal Sunday. Sadly, we cannot do that today, but um, we do invite your uh, gifts for ELCA World Hunger, which go to uh, sustainable hunger relief in many places around the world. Thank you to to all those who have filled out their time and talent forms. If you signed up to help with audiovisual ministry, we do need to train you. And so just know that we're going to reach out to you and um, ask you to come on a Sunday morning when we are live streaming so you can figure out how to do that. It's not as hard as it might seem. I have learned to do it. It's amazing. Thanks be to God. Um, And then also, if you did sign up to help as a worship assistant, perhaps as a scripture reader, we'll be reaching out to you um, to incorporate more people into our worship life as um, our case numbers of COVID go down. If you are interested in what is going on across the Grand Canyon Synod of the ELCA, there are spring gatherings coming up. You can read the details in your bulletin. We do need some help organizing the Grace Room and also helping Adrian in the church office. If you have an hour or two you'd like to give to Grace, please let me or Adrian know. Lent is approaching a week from this Tuesday, February 16th. I will offer space and time for private confession between 3 and 7 p.m. Please let me know if you'd like to grab a slot. On Ash Wednesday, which is a week from this Wednesday, we will offer ashes to go at the Northwest Gate from 8 to 9 a.m. and then again from 5 to 6 p.m., followed by a Facebook live stream Ash Wednesday service at 6.30. The following Wednesday, we'll begin our midweek Lenten services at 6.30 in the courtyard, gathering around the theme Morning into Dancing, Making Space for Grief. We'll be singing Holden Evening Prayer and also posting the audio of those services after the service is done. So even if you can't make it to the in-person courtyard midweek Lenten service, you can listen to it later, and it'll be on the Facebook page as well as the Grace website um, for everybody to um, 
be enriched by. We have received a very generous gift from Desert Streams Lutheran Church in Surprise, Arizona. They did close their doors at the end of 2020, and today members of their council were with us during our courtyard in-person worship to share a gift. Um, they did have, they were a mission congregation and they did have land, although I don't think they had a building on it, but they sold their land and they gifted to a few organizations in the valley um, the proceeds from the sale of that land. And we are recipients, very grateful <laughs> recipients of $45,500. Um, so we do give thanks to God for the generosity of God's people at Desert Streams Lutheran Church. Um, they have been a partner of ours um, with Lutheran Camp Formation, for sure. Um, and um, I am guessing in other ways, too, but I don't know the details off the top of my head. But um, I know that I had met these good folks at Lutheran Camp Formation a few years ago. Um, and so we're just really grateful uh, for them. So um, I invite you to share a, a prayer of thanks to God for their generous gift to us. Are there any other announcements? Wherever you are, please stand for the blessing. May the light of Christ shine upon us, all love surround us, and the pure light within us guide us on our way. Amen. We sing together, Arise, your light has come. Let your light shine. Thanks be to God. <laughs>